Hi guys, it's the evening of April 11th, and you all know what that means. It means it's Falcon Heavy time, this time with Arab Set 6, and uh, it's on in a couple of hours, and uh, I'm definitely gonna watch it. It's super exciting, but I also got something exciting to, uh, to share on uh, our own project. So, a week or two ago, I showed you uh, that we got these swirlers machined at the uh, PH Spun Technique, and we got them, and I shot a little bit of video of them so you can actually see how nice they are. And I also shot a bit of video on uh, how we're going to use them because I don't think we've released any any pictures of how we're actually going to implement them into one of our test engines. So uh, let's take a look at the footage and I'll uh, talk you through it. Now let's take a look at how the swirler element actually works. This is a cut through of one of the elements. And when it's sitting inside an engine, it's actually divided in, uh, in two levels by a flange that will sit here and uh, here. So there is the uh, upper level up here and there's the lower down here. In our case the upper level will be liquid oxygen. So the uh, element will draw in liquid through uh, these uh, holes and as you can see they're not centered so that the, velo the, the fluid that comes in of this hole has a tangential velocity and that will cause the, uh, the liquid to rotate around inside this chamber. Now it will of course be uh, be moving towards the exit and it will come out of the exit with a uh, rotational momentum and that causes it to come out in a cone so it actually forms a, a sheet and a cone exiting like this. The same applies to the bottom half. So in the bottom out here we'll have the, uh, the fuel, in our case that's ethanol and in the same way it will enter through the, the small orifices, it will uh, it will be swirling around uh, in this uh, in this groove and it will exit down here in a, uh, a cone and form a uh, liquid sheet. Now if we get the, uh, the distances right between uh, these two uh, levels then the two cones that form out here they will actually collide somewhere down here and uh, where they collide, uh, if they collide, then we'll have the perfect atomization. Now enough about that, let's take a look at how they actually look in real life. So this is one of the elements, beautifully uh, made by PH Spun Technique. You can easily see the, uh, the inlets in both the inner and outer elements. And now we turn to the business end, so the exit, you see the uh, inner and outer exits. This element is of course not braced together yet, so if you topple it over, then the lid will fall out. And it's quite easy to remove the uh, inner part from the outer part as well. And you can see the groove down there on the center of the inner part, that's where it will be braced together to the uh, outer element. We got quite a bunch of these elements, because we anticipate to be uh, spending a few of them on uh, bracing tests. And that's what's uh, coming up in the coming weekend will be experimenting with the various ways of bracing these elements together. If you've been reading the blog, you'll probably know that BPM100 is not the first place we're going to use swirlers. To uh, get a bit of experience in this, we're actually modifying a BPM5 engine to uh, take swirlers. So, to do that, we're uh, machining a new injector flange. And it's going to look like this. And it has a total of 19 swirler elements. This is primarily something we do to get some experience with swirlers and to make sure that the first BPM100 is not going to go kaboom on the first go. So you also see that now we're missing a substantial piece of hardware because we're missing a, uh, a flange or an injector head that we can actually mount these swirlers in. But we also got that one and in real life it looks like this. As you can see, the uh, whole injector here is made out of brass. There will be 19 elements in total in the uh, BPM5 swirler pro prototype. Each element has two bracings, one to the lid and one between the inner and outer elements. And then each element is uh, braced to both the injector flange itself and then this uh, cover plate that is in between. So that's a lot of bracing that has to go well in uh, in one go. So it calls for a bit of experimentation but we're quite optimistic that we can uh, get it to work. 
And so this is just a shot from the uh, from the business end of the injector, so the uh, the exit end, where you can see the uh, the exit of the swellers. Well, guys, that's the end of the video. Hopefully, after the weekend, I'll have some uh, footage of braced swirlers to uh, show off. Let's see.